Welcome once again to Worship Online. It's great to have you with us as we gather together apart. My name is Lynn. I have the joy of being the minister at Adelaide West. Today we have the Reverend Dr. Phil Carr bringing us the message. And for the kids, after this part of the service, we have Kids Space brought to us by Lisa. And today it's all about Samson. And there's also an activity sheet for during the service. Every week we light a candle. Here and at home. It reminds us of the presence of Christ as we meet. And as we light our candles, wherever we are together, it's a symbol of us worshipping together. This week is Refugee Week. And this year, it's celebrating the year of welcome, challenging us to be a welcoming country. And this doesn't start with politicians. This starts with us. Welcome as deep biblical roots. We are to welcome others just as Christ has welcomed us. And we are challenged to love our neighbours, including strangers in our lands. It's a time for listening and learning from others and their stories and to walk the journey of welcome. This theme of welcome offers us a rich and beautiful opportunity to learn from God and to move further towards becoming a people living out the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. We're all aware that restrictions are easing here in Australia. On Friday night, we had the first youth at the church in person, all within our COVID safe plan obligations, and it was a great joy and a sign of hope to be able to do so. Some connect groups are meeting here at the church in the coming week and some of our other groups are also considering um, meeting here again soon. This coming Friday, the maximum in any one room will be increased to 75, provided we have the four square metres per person with various other obligations. And the Church Council of Adelaide West will be meeting on Thursday to consider further the roadmap to reopening the church building and how we will be worshipping together over the coming weeks. Decisions will be made carefully and prayerfully. And we'll communicate any decisions via email uh, to those on the church database, the website, and also social media. But today, we gather together to share in this service in this way. A service of worship, where we draw near to God, knowing the living hope of Jesus Christ and experiencing the Spirit flowing in and through us. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows Great a mercy, but I could further 
This week's Bible reading is from Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Our second reading is from Matthew 9, verses 35 to 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear 
whether you're online in Lockleys or looking in from the other side of the world in Yorkshire, let me say, the spirit in me greets the spirit in you. When I was younger, uh, so much younger than today, I'd sometimes sing that old hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. But these days I'm not so self-assured. I seem more in tune with all things sad and sorrowful. For while much of the world is wise and wonderful, there's also so much stuff that's cold and callous and cruel. Anne had cerebral palsy. She died just a month ago, aged 54. Now she didn't have the coronavirus. She suffered from multiple organ failure from septic shock that originated from pressure ulcers. It's been alleged that her so-called carers kept her sitting 24-7 in a cane chair for at least the last 12 months of her life. Thus, those sores, hence her regrettable, untimely demise. It was a week ago, Martin, a gentle 75-year-old, peace-loving Roman Catholic American, was supporting those who want justice for people of colour in his hometown, Buffalo, New York. Suddenly, out of the blue, he was confronted by police, the boys in black, and shoved to the ground. As he lay there, barely conscious, blood streaming from his head, a squad of those well-armed officers walked right over him. Martin remains in hospital even today, experiencing severe pain, thanks to those constables. Meanwhile, the leader of the free world used the power of his office and his Twitter account to besmirch Martin as an extreme provocateur. Well, how about the bloke who cunningly snaffled a forest of toilet paper and vats of hand sanitizer from a local supermarket chain, devishly scheming to make a financial killing during lockdown from folks who had been unexpectedly thrust into financial distress? You see, it's these things that make me want to say, help me if you can. I'm feeling down. For alongside the viral pandemic, we have a pandemic of human abuse. We have a pandemic of, of racial hatred. We have a pandemic of self-centered greed. These things are as epidemic as any virus. They endlessly infect and reinfect the world, carving a sorrowful stream of suffering across the continent of time. Ten years ago, Barack Obama spoke to a church in Atlanta, Georgia. He said, the biggest deficit we have in the world is a deficit of empathy. He went on, we are in great need of people being able to stand in someone else's shoes and see the world through their eyes. And I guess most people would agree. And behind his comment, though, is an understanding that people often care little for the problems others face. People in extremis typically get little more than momentary sympathy, five minutes in the media spotlight. But when the tables are turned, as they are for, well, for all of us sooner or later, it's then a different matter. For then, like Anne and Martin, we get to see people going over us or around us, dispassionately passing us by. But thank God, some folk still stop and respond. And that, of course, brings us to the reading today. Rabbi Jesus had been touring town to town, observing so many desperate people. It's said that he was moved by compassion. He saw them, he felt for them, and then he was motivated to mend them. If Jesus' emotional life could be characterized, it would be someone constantly and consistently compassionate. 
You know, in the Christian Bible, for every time that Jesus is recorded as laughing, there are 20 references to him crying. He truly was a man of sorrows. But not because he was depressed, but because he was compassionate. His compassion connects him to humanity so that our sadness saddens him. Our pain pains him. Remember when he rode into Jerusalem that final time and he'd soon become victim to that awful violence? Of all emotions, he wept for the people around him. It seemed as though their pain moved him even more than his own perilous predicament. This is compassion. With all due respect to Obama, compassion goes a lot further than empathy. Compassion is more than just standing in someone else's shoes and seeing the world through their eyes. Empathy feels, sure, but compassion feels and then participates. It engages. I mean, we can stand there and empathize, but compassion gets up close and personal. I mean, the Good Samaritan didn't just look at the man in the ditch and think, well, he's in a bad way, he must be hurting. Rather, he went to him and assisted, assisted to make that sufferer's life more bearable, more tolerable, more hopeful. You see, compassion puts skin on empathy. Now, we might ask, where did Jesus' compassion come from? Well, you know, I think it came from him knowing that all of us, all of us are made in the image of God. Red and yellow, black and white, all of reveal the image of God. Rich, poor, conservative, progressive, all disclose the image of God. I mean, Jesus knew that we are irrevocably and irreversibly, and I hope irretrievably made in that likeness, and thereby, forever attached to one another, so that when one rejoices, at some level, all of us rejoice. When one suffers, all of us suffer, one way or another. He just knew that, that life is not everyone for themselves, simply because we're all in this life together. Pastoral theologian Henri Nouwen summarised it. Their flesh is my flesh. Their blood is my blood. Their pain, my pain. And their smile, my smile. We must think again whenever we reckon there's a them and an us. You know, I'd like to believe this insight of our deep connection with each other on some level informed Tom Moore in the United Kingdom, who just before his 100th birthday, with the assistance of his walking frame, completed 100 laps of his backyard and raised 20 million to give away to those suffering from COVID-19. That's compassion. Or what about a week ago when two Queensland men, Frank Schlegel and Mark Hayes, raced out into the water to aid their friend who was being mauled at that very moment by a giant white pointer shark. That's compassion. The eminent philosopher and linguist Noam Chomsky wrote, human beings are capable of many things, some of them horrible and some wonderful. And when you look more closely, the horrible things are always born of self-interest and the wonderful things always forged in compassion. Now, I'm not going to finish today by saying we should all be more compassionate. I mean, such homiletic moralism is as therapeutic as, well, injecting bleach to beat a virus. Instead, I suggest that if we want to be more compassionate. There's at least one sure path to take. And it's this.
spend a little time thinking about the life of that extraordinary man, Jesus. Look at those personal encounters he had. Get a, get a feel of what happened then. For when we appreciate how he was with many different people, what he did for them, what he did with them, how much he gave of himself for them, and often at great cost, we will then find out the why of his life, of his entire life. We'll find it hard to avoid this one particular life-changing truth, that everyone and everything is held together by the grace of God. And brothers and sisters, when we see our oneness in God, believe me, compassion is real close. You know, what happened to Anne in the cane chair and Martin sprawled out on the footpath? Well, that evidences humanity's dispassion. And what centenarian Tom did and those two friends who went to the aid of their surfer mate, well, that demonstrates Christ-like compassion. So when the pain of this world surrounds us with darkness and despair, when searching just confounds us with false hopes everywhere, it is then that we are called to follow Jesus and be compassionate like him. Or, as I like to think of it, called by God to put skin on empathy. Maybe you could join me now in a time of prayer. God of loving community, we praise you for our journey and for your abundant grace. We praise you for your saving word that guides this struggling human race. God of all creation, your future we embrace. For we are called to follow Jesus to let compassion flow through us and fill this place. Amen. Let's pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks that we can draw near to you in this way, that you love to hear us pray, that you invite us into prayer. We pause to remember our world around us. We lift to you the situations where people are hurting and suffering, where people are dying of hunger, where disease where COVID-19 is rampant. So we pray for our world today. We pray for refugees all around the world. Hundreds of thousands of people that don't have a home to call home. We pray for them. We pray that we as a country may be more welcoming. And that as we think about this over this next week, that you would help us to be a people of welcome. That we'll be able to find ways to work hard to combat all forms of racism and inequality in Australia. We pray for those who are in detention centres. We pray for all those who are seeking to care for asylum seekers and refugees in our land. For those providing emergency food relief, which has been called on more over these past couple of months. And we pray for pathways to permanent protection for asylum seekers and for a fair and timely process for accessing claims for protection. 
Lord Jesus, we pray for the, the communities around us right now, that, that we will be a people of welcome and a people of compassion. Reaching out, caring for all those around us. And Holy Spirit, we pray for those in our midst and those we know who are suffering, who are going into weeks not knowing what will happen, who are facing fear, unknown health issues, going through chemotherapy, and all the different things that are happening in our lives at the moment. We pray for your peace and we pray for your healing, your grace and mercy to carry us and sustain us at this time. We also remember the offerings and tithes that we give. And as we give them, we pray that you would use us as well as our gifts to share your love, to share your compassion with our communities around us, both locally and globally. We lift to you our prayers, those spoken aloud and those in our hearts, together in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we close this morning, I encourage you to reach out and connect with others right now or straight after the kids session with Lisa. I'm available at 11am on Zoom for a chat and if you'd like to join us, grab a coffee and the session link will be available on the Adelaide West Facebook page and group or contact me. For Connect and Small Groups, there will be some questions to discuss from today's service on Facebook. And thanks to Phil for his message today. We always value prayer and we're available to pray with you. Ring or email or press the prayer button now. Go into this week following Jesus as people of compassion, feeling 
and engaging with others. And as a people of welcome, loving our neighbours and strangers, living out the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you each and every day as you go out to serve the world. Amen. Thank you for joining us.